Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you would just, uh, in the spirit of worship, just take your seat. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, we had a, an experience for service. The Lord moved uh, and spoke to us prophetically. And uh, I have a mind just to show you the first service, but we don't have the capacity just yet to do that. So I'd encourage you to go online and watch it. Uh, but the Lord spoke to us prophetically and he called to us to come, to come aside because he wanted to speak to us. And uh, out of that, the Lord spoke to us. And we're in a church, as a church right now, in a season where we're taking some time to seek the Lord. That's a good thing. So that's a good thing. And if you're a guest visiting uh, either here on campus or in the great cloud of witnesses, we're really blessed that you're with us today. But just to let you know, we're, we're in a season where we're studying God's word together and laying aside things so that we can be in his presence. <clears throat> and uh, while I was getting up to minister after worship in the first service, the Lord showed me a series of things, and he showed me that he was calling. I saw the Lord calling to his people. And the call wasn't just to his people here, but I saw it going out to his people all over the nation and maybe beyond, and saying, come away with me. Come away, my beloved. Come to me. Come to me right now. And I saw the body of Christ and the churches and, and people busy doing things, you know, just, just busy. And suddenly, they sensed something. You know, how, you know how warm it was last night? Did you notice it wasn't this morning? <laughs> right? We had an unusual warmth, and then, but you can, when there's a shift, how many of you have ever been outside and it's really, really warm, and then all of a sudden it becomes cold, or vice versa, there's a front that comes through? Nobody has to tell you the atmosphere has changed. You feel it, right? And I, I saw the Lord calling to his people, and the atmosphere was changing, and, and a lot of his people, everybody felt the shift. Some were so busy, they couldn't even look up from what they were doing for more than a moment, but there were some that just couldn't go back to what they were doing. And, and I heard the Lord say, come away, and, and God is calling people, and I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, I sense that this is happening all over the nation, uh, and I don't know that it is, like naturally, but I saw it in my spirit that, that God is having his people who are listening to set aside some of what they had planned And to just not, not abandon it, but just lay it aside and seek the Lord. And he's, can you hear that? Do you feel that? I felt the Lord say that as the year turned, uh, many people have had a hard time getting back into, back, back into what they typically do. And it's because there's been a resetting. And, and the Lord also showed me some things about what's happening in the nations right now. And you can just watch it in the first, on the app. You know, I won't go into all of it, uh, except to say that I said what, I, what he gave me. Just, I saw more than I said. But that there is a shift that's happening in the earth. And, 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 and it is a God thing. It's not the devil. It's not politicians. It's not, uh, it's God. He's calling his people away to him. And when God calls us away, it's because he wants us to, to receive from him direction. There are times when God gives us, he, he puts us into a place and says, now this is how you live, this is what you do. You know, 
make plans, build, plant, and, and settle down here. You're going to be here for a while. And we make plans, and we operate in the principles of God's word. We do what we know to do, and, and God blesses it. And then there's times when there's a shift in the atmosphere. And you may have been in shorts because it was 70 degrees, but now it's 20 degrees. And if you keep going on, you're, gonna, you're just not going to be equipped for what's coming. And you have to go inside and put on something else. There's a time to be outside, there's a time to be inside. And then I saw, as it were, a room. And it was a room in our houses, all of our houses, if we know the Lord. All of us have this room. And it looked like a physical room, but I know that it was speaking of something. It's a room where Jesus is sitting, speaking to us. But the, and he's waiting for us. And I saw the room filled with all kinds of things. We put all kinds of other things in there. Books and tapes and CDs and furniture and religious works and activities. And, but it was all covering, and Jesus is sitting there, and I'm seeing it right now even as I say it, like behind these stacks of all of this material. And he's ready to speak, but you're not in the room. You're getting all these other voices, and then you just take it and throw it in the, in the God room. But in the God room is Jesus. And he's waiting, and he needs you to take those voices out, to clear out the room so that it's just you and him. And I saw, I saw as the room is cleared out, Jesus is there, and there's a little table and a candle, and as you light the candle, he begins to speak. And the Lord wants to speak to us. And it's not through the regular routine, not through the regular way that we've planned even coming, I'm just being, just leaning into this moment, but coming here today, I had a plan. I mean, believe me, for uh, this month, this year, and it's just, I just can't, I just can't. I just can't. I just, I feel arrested, and I feel him calling me. It's like when Moses was with the children of Israel and, and he heard the Lord's voice on the mountain and he had to go, he went up, you know, he went up and down the mountain, I think, in Exodus eight times. <laughs> but he, he had to go up. And, and I saw that room and all of us have a room and some of us haven't even been there. We don't even know what's, we, we've never even sat in that room apart from all the other voices and just listened to Jesus and his word. Some of us haven't been there in a long time. But this is what I saw, the Lord is speaking. And if you don't go in the room and clear out the other stuff, you're gonna miss it. You're not gonna hear what he's saying. And I just felt like the Lord isn't being silent anymore. He's actually speaking. But you're not gonna hear it unless you go into the room. Is this, are you capturing the spirit of this? He's calling you, I'm telling you, the Lord is calling to you. Those who are near and those who are far. Those who are serving the Lord with all they know to do and those that are just kind of sticking God in a place and not even sure what you believe, but you're here because, you know, it's what you do on Sundays. I want to tell you something. In the season that is coming upon this earth, business as usual will not work. Not for his people. Do you know the world can get away with things you can't? And God is gracious, and he lets us get away with things for a long time because he's so merciful. But there comes moments in life and moments in the earth where, where the room, we, we have to get rid of all of, not just the sinful things, just the things that we've piled into the God room that are actually not, they're helpful and good, but they're not him. And we have to find that place where we sit at his feet and hear his word. And he wants to speak to us. And if you, if, you, if you haven't been there in a while, go into that room, clear it out, and just sit in his presence. The devotional guide that we have is a helpful thing. It's just there to help. But ultimately, it's not the guide, it's Jesus. 
He wants to speak. Turn to somebody and say, the Lord wants to speak. In fact, in fact I believe he is speaking. Uh, and so, and so I, if you have your Bible, just open up to Jeremiah 15. And I'm going to pick up where I left off in the last service. So if you weren't in the last service, which most of you, almost all of you weren't, I'd encourage you to listen to it. But this will still bless you. And if you were in the last service and you're watching this, you know where we're going. So just look in Jeremiah 15 if you would. This is a verse, a passage that the Lord has just not allowed me to to leave for several months. I wake up in the night and it's reverberating in my mind. I wake up in the morning and I find myself, without thinking, speaking these words. And I feel that it's a call to me, but I think it's more than that. I think it's a call to many in the body of Christ. And I wouldn't have thought that except that that the Lord spoke that to me. about two weeks ago. It's so personal that uh, I wouldn't share it, but I feel that I'm supposed to. And, and what's really fascinating is, um, it, I, I love the Bible so much, you have no idea. I, I truly believe it is the voice of God. And in so many ways. And When God speaks in the scriptures through prophets, what I love about the prophetic books is not just that you have the prophecies, but you have the story of the prophets themselves. And so often, what God is giving the prophets to say is also coming out of the prophets' experiences. So what what the minister is going through and God is leading the minister through, he's leading the body through, as a metaphor almost, as a, as a, as a parallel. Does that make sense? And so it is with Jeremiah, uh, and so what, one of the keys to understanding Jeremiah is that it is not just his prophecies at a particular time to Israel prior to their, sort of like their la- the first part is their last warning And then the second part is what happens because they didn't listen and how they're taken captive and God then uses that captivity to do what they wouldn't listen to in the beginning. But that's the big meta-narrative. But but the microcosm is it's the story really of Jeremiah himself who is struggling with this calling that God has given him to speak for the Lord, to be a mouthpiece to his people and to his generation. And from the very beginning of Jeremiah, we see this struggle in the young prophet. He, he was a shepherd, he, did, he wasn't looking to be uh, a preacher. He wasn't looking to deliver intense messages to people that weren't inclined to hear it. And so the Lord speaks to him anyway. You know, you know God, God's got a purpose for your life and it isn't necessarily what you think it is. And so God speaks to him and says, before you were born, I knew you. I I called you from your mother's womb. In other words, I got a purpose for you that is is far beyond what you think, and it precedes your even understanding who you were, your own self-actualization. And I've ordained you, before you were born, to be a prophet to the nations, my mouthpiece. You are to be a message to Israel and to the nations. I'm going to use your life to speak. And Jeremiah said, no, Lord, I'm too young. I got my whole life ahead of me. I'm not ready for this. And the Lord said, stop saying. Notice, the first thing God says to Jeremiah, this is a key to what we're going to read. Jeremiah would respond emotionally to what God was saying to him. And immediately he says, no, Lord. Uh, Let's just look at it, okay? Come on, go to Jeremiah 1. Oh, I'm just going to put these away. Okay. 
Jeremiah 1. Verse 4, the Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. That's interesting. So he existed before he existed. I knew you before I created you in your mother's womb, which means Jeremiah had some existence prior to his conception, at least in the mind of God. And before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my Nabi, my prophet, my voice to the nations. Immediately, O sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. First thing we find out is Jeremiah is contesting with the Lord, disqualifying himself with his words. And what does the Lord do? First thing the Lord says to Jeremiah after he gives him his assignment is, he says, don't say. Would you just read that with me? Don't say. Did you know that if you're going to be used of the Lord to fulfill his purpose for your life, there's some things you just have to stop saying? Words matter. We're in a world where words are cheap. Everyone's saying anything that comes to their minds without regard to consequences. We celebrate liberty and fear responsibility. But liberty without responsibility is chaos. And the prophet the young man called to be a prophet immediately resists what God had called him to do because he's looking at his life and he has a different image of himself. And he speaks his own disqualification. I'm too young. And the Lord immediately corrects him by telling him what not to say. It's important you hear this. Don't say this. We've got to deal with your confession here. We've got to deal with the words of your mouth. No longer say this. He didn't say don't think this. He said don't say this. Change what you're saying. For you must go where I send you and say what I tell you. I'm going to, get, I'm going to send you places, and you've got to go there, and you've got to say what I tell you. Now, notice, notice we find out what Jeremiah's hang-up was. He says, and don't be afraid of people, for I'll be with you, and I'll protect you. In other words, God knew that Jeremiah was afraid of what people would think. He was living in a socially connected, his mind was more connected with the opinions of others than it was with what God was saying and what God thought. And so he said, don't be afraid of people. I, the Lord, have spoken. Now, that should be the end of it. Don't say this, I, the Lord, have spoken. But then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth. What did the Lord do to Jeremiah after he touched his mouth? What what would it be like for the Lord to put his finger on your mouth? The holy finger that created the universe to have him touch your mouth. And he said, look, or behold, see this. I put my words in your mouth. Not your disqualifying self-revelation, but my revelation of who you are. You say this isn't what you want to do, and you're too young to do it. I say this is who you are, and this is who you were before you were born, and you must say what I'm telling you to say, and go where I'm telling you to go, so stop saying what you've been saying. And then he touched his mouth. And he said, I put my words in your mouth, and today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. He said, I'm going to give you words, and with my words, you're going to do what I've called you to do. And so Jeremiah starts delivering those words, and, and as you read through the book of Jeremiah, it was an intense message And so in chapter 15, and I just want you to see this, Jeremiah is now in a tough spot because people are oppressing him for what he's been saying. And he's midway through his ministry and he's just done. And we get a glimpse into his heart. In in verse 10 he said, what sorrow is mine? 
my mother, oh, that I had died at birth. I'm hated everywhere I go. And he, he starts talking about how he feels and what other people think about him. And the Lord says to him in verse 11, I'll take care of you, Jeremiah. I'll take care of you. And Jeremiah just keeps on going in verse 15. You know what's happened to me. Please step in and help me. Punish my person. He's in this loop of, of just angst. And, and he finally says in verse 18 about God, why does my suffering continue? Why is my wound so incurable? Your help seems uncertain as a seasonal brook, like a spring that's gone dry. God, you, you, it feels like you're not even with me. You're not helping me. You're only occasionally anointing, giving me help like a, like, a, like a little bit of water in a drought every now and then. It's not enough, God. It's not enough. Can you see he's just, even though God said, hey, I'm, I'm going to take care of you. I'm with you. He's, he's just so focused on his own, in, his own pain. And so the Lord responds to him and says, and th- this, is, this is the verse, verse 19, if you return to me, I will restore you so you can continue to serve me. And the word return and restore are the same Hebrew word, but it's a play. And what he's saying is, if you, if you come back, now, Jeremiah hadn't backslidden, but he, what, he was no longer focused on the Lord himself. He was focused on everyone and what they were doing and how they were rewarded and not being punished and how he was not being rewarded. And they were, it was just, he was just in this loop of pain. And God said, listen, here's the deal, Jeremiah. If you return to me, if you come back, he, he wasn't in gross sin. He was just externally focused. And he said, come back to me come to me and I will come to you. I'll restore you and you'll be able to continue to do what I've called you to do. And notice the next part. This is the part that I just want you to see. He said, if you, what does it say? Verse 19. If you speak good words rather than what? Worthless ones, you'll be my spokesman, actually my mouth could be my mouth. Now, why is that important? Well, in Jeremiah 1, he said, I've called you to be my mouth. And he said, I can't. The first thing, Jeremiah's got a problem with his own self-image. And so we see in chapter 15, he's going right back because he's going through these hard times. He's going right back to this self-image deal where he's, he's upset. He, he only can see is that he doesn't feel like God is helping him. He feels the persecution. And all of those feelings were genuine and real. But here's the thing. God said to him in the middle of his complaint, hey, I'm with you. I'm going to take care of you. And Jeremiah doesn't even acknowledge that. He just goes right back into his loop. It seems like you're not even there. It seems like the Lord just said to you, I'm going to take care of you. And he's like, it seems like your help isn't even there. I cry out to you, and it's like a little brook in, in, that only occasionally gives me a little water, and, and, I, and you're not help. And the Lord says, here's my reply to you. If you return to me, what does he mean by that? If you come back to looking at me and not everything else, I will restore you. And, here, and part of the restoration is you've got to come back to the Lord. Now, this is why I'm saying this, because in this season, I feel the Lord is calling his body, and I believe that you're going to see this around the country, that God is calling his people who will listen to, to a, a place where we need to come close and listen to him, because there are some things... Uh, there are some things happening and about to happen in the world, and if you try to put your opinion on it or get in the middle of it, you're going to get injured. God is in control of this nation. God has reset the table in the Middle East, and it's not done yet. This is a moment. In the first service, I saw this as a moment like when the first, the first hammer hit the Berlin Wall in 1989. This is a moment of rapid change. And it's not about a presidential election. It's way beyond that. God is resetting the table for the gospel. And I'm telling you right now, the Lord wants us to come away partially for protection. Because things are going to start falling in the world. There's going to be some judgments that are going to be poured out or going to happen. God's going to take some, he's going to allow some consequences to come. And, and the people that are under the blood of Jesus are going to be safe and blessed and feast. But you need to come away. You need to get out of the streets and, and stop trying to 
change the culture. In this moment, you need to come to Jesus. And just sit back and watch and pray. My, my, my. And so he says to Jeremiah, here's the problem, Jeremiah. It's not that I'm not helping you. It's not that um, uh, your enemies are, are, hate you. <laughs> it, that's not the problem. The problem is you're not, return, you're not with me. You're, not, you're focused on that, not me. So if you'll come back to just me. Remember in the beginning, it was you and me. I called you. You had a problem with it. I touched your mouth. I put my word in your mouth, and that was the answer. Now you're filling your mouth with all of these worthless things. And so the, one of the ways we return to the Lord is by not just laying aside sin, yes, laying aside distractions, yes, I talked about that in the first service, but laying aside empty words, worthless words, words that may be true in the sense that it's how, it's the, it's how I'm feeling, but it's not helpful and it's not the capital T truth. There comes a time where you've got to stop just looping about what's wrong. And, all, and you've already poured out to God, you've said it, now the Lord wants you to put his word in your mouth and just say what he gives you to say. Mm. And God is calling us as a people to his word, to his voice, to prayer, and to a place where we're setting aside the things that are in the room with Jesus, cleaning it out and just sitting in his presence, just for a little while. And you're not gonna be able to, uh, and this, this I, I say this, I believe by the word of the Lord, you're not going to be able to approach this year the way you have the last three years. This is a different year. And if you approach it in the same way, you're gonna get injured because you're in the way. And the Lord is calling his people to himself. He's saying, get off the field, stop, just get off the field, I'm doing some things. You may have plans, but the spirit might say, no, don't do that. Don't go there, don't, just hold it. Hold. He's not saying it's no, he's saying, wait, not right now, I'm doing something. I feel, I see the Lord right now in my spirit rolling up his sleeves I see Jesus rolling up his sleeves and coming into the earth. And he's saying to his people, actually he's telling the Holy Spirit to say to you, tell my people to come away. Tell my people to get off the field for now. Just get away. And he's ready. He's ready. And he's starting. He's doing things. Things you're not going to be able to predict. And no one on television is going to be able to interpret. And you don't even have to interpret it. You just have to get out of the way. And that doesn't mean you're idle, you're with Jesus, because he's speaking. There's things he wants to tell you. How many of you feel that? You just feel, I can't just go back to my life like it has been. That's just, I can't, I don't have energy to do it. There's like, and that's because we're in a pause right now. While the Lord is doing some things in this nation, in institutions in this nation, uh, that's all I'm going to say. And we need to be with him. You know, Noah, God had this thing. He was going to deal with the earth and do a big reset. But before he did the reset, he said, now Noah, build a boat and get inside. He didn't say build a boat, put the animals in, and you go swimming. <laughs> a lot of people in the body of Christ, you know, there's a season to be in the boat. There's a season to be out there. Noah was a preacher of righteousness, according to Hebrews 11. He warned his generation. You know, but, but you know, there comes a time where you've got to stop trying to, and you just get in the boat. And, and, and there's some things you just need to set aside. There's some sins and also just distractions. You just, it's not helping you. Put it aside. The only thing that's going to bring you clarity in this season, this is what I feel the Spirit saying, is extraction. Extraction of things that are other voices and, and taking that and pulling into the Lord. 
going back to Jesus, returning to him alone. Hallelujah. Is, any, is, is this bearing witness with anybody in this house? Amen. And sometimes the Lord will tell you why, and sometimes he doesn't. But I sense, this is what I feel the Lord saying, and I could, I could miss all of this, but, but I, don't, I don't believe I am. That right now, and by the way, being out uh, off the field, out of the, in the boat, means you're not out there making comments. Like you're, the, you're an editor in the editorial page interpreting everything because you're going to get it wrong. It's going to be out there, Instagram, tweeted, and Facebooked, and you're going to feel like a fool. You're not going to get it right. Just get off. Just for a little while. For right now, get in the boat. Well, what does that mean? Should I, should I, should I pull out of this? I'm not telling you that you have to make ma- massive changes. I'm not prophesying doom. I, I, I don't know, I don't know, all I know is that he's telling me to say this, the Lord is rolling up his sleeves and he is doing some things that's beyond any politician or any leader or any business or corporation, he's resetting the table and we just need to get out of the way for right now. Because he wants to refresh us. Because in what's gonna come after this, his people are, the world is going to be confused and troubled and his people are going to have joy and refreshment and certainty and peace and we're going to go out with a clear voice. So, words. What are the words What are the words that the Lord wants you to audit right now? To inspect and set aside. Right now, the thing you need to be doing is sitting at his feet and hearing his word and speaking what what his word says. Praise the Lord. Say, well, where do I start? So, on New Year's Eve, I ministered kind of the opening of this, and <clears throat> I said, the Lord gave me a psalm to give us as a church for the year, and the psalm was Psalm 34. And every year when the Lord gives us a scripture, we, I encourage you to write it down by hand and, and, and read it and speak it over your life and your family and over our church. And I feel that Psalm 34 is, is he just gave that to me, But since then, he's begun to explain to me why it's important. And if you read through Psalm 34, there's this one one section in the middle of it where the Lord says something, and I want you to just, just real quick, just look at this. Psalm 34, only got a moment. Notice Psalm 34 opens up with, a statement about what his people should be saying. I will praise the Lord at all times. His his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. I will constantly speak his praise. So we're supposed to be talking about God and how great he is. Not about what we think is happening in the world. This is more important. And then he talks about how when we, verse four, pray to the Lord and he answers. He delivers us from our fears. Notice there's this promise of the Lord ministering to us when we get our words right and focus on him. Speak his praise continuously. And I'm not gonna go through the whole psalm, but I just want you to see in verse 11. And I'm reading in the New Living. It says, come, my children. You could read it this way. Come to me, my children. Come here. Come come here. Come here. Come, come on. 
Come to me and listen to me. I want to talk to you. Folks, is there anything more important than what God is saying? It's more important than the Huffington Post or the Drudge Report or whatever you listen to all the time that is not helping you at all. He wants to speak to you. Come and listen. I'm talking. I've got something to say to you. If Jesus was to appear and say, I want to speak to you, would you show up? Well, he wants to speak. He said, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. He wants to talk to us about the fear of the Lord isn't a bad thing. It's an honor and a respect for his greatness. And he said, verse 12, does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Anybody out there? I want to live a long life as long as it's prosperous, right? <laughs> good, fruitful, productive. You want to live a good, long life? See many days, it says in the, in the Hebrew. Then do this. Here's what you do. Keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. Notice he said... The first thing he tells us if we want to have a long, productive life is that we need to audit and edit our words. It's, we need to cut some things out and speak things. So if you want to know what to speak, speak some of these verses in Psalm 134 or Psalm 34. Speak these out of your mouth. When you're troubled, just say, when you're fearful, just say, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. I seek the Lord and he hears me and he delivers me from all my fears. I'm seeking you, Lord, and you're hearing me and you are delivering me from all my fears. I feel exposed. I feel like the angel of the Lord encamps around, surrounds me because I fear and respect him and he defends me. The Lord, the angel of the Lord is with, speak some of the, till they're in your heart. Take one verse maybe a week and just meditate on it and meditate on it and say it. It'll get in you. But uh, take the worthless words that aren't producing anything, the negative loops about yourself and your, your effectiveness. And all, just read what Jeremiah said. All of, just set that aside for now and stop talking like that. The Lord will take care of you and say this instead. Go back to his word because he put his word, he, he put, he's put his word in our mouths, but we have to speak it. And in this season, I just feel like this is what the word of the Lord is. Today, I feel like this is what the word of the Lord is. Return to good words. Take away the things. If you're going to really come and answer that call of the Lord to come to me, part of coming to the Lord is keeping your tongue. Don't speak worthless things. Don't speak lies. Just praise him and focus on him, especially right now. And I believe this is what the Lord is saying to the church today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we stand up? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let's just take a moment and worship the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Behold, I do a quick work in the earth and in this nation. A work of cleansing, a work of recompense and restoration. Come, come into my house. Come into my presence. Come away. Come away.
for I am speaking. And I have great comfort and blessing. For a day in my presence is better than a thousand years anywhere else. Come and listen. Come and listen. For I am speaking. Hallelujah. Father, speak to each of us about the words that we're to extract, set aside, the worthless, empty words that aren't producing anything. And help us to speak the words that you've given us in this moment, in this season. And Father, as we continue through this January journey of seeking you, I pray, Father, that you would continue to speak to us about the weights that we need to set aside, the sins that distract, and the words you want us to retire because we must return to your word if we're going to be restored. Hallelujah. Just say this out loud. Father, I return to you. Speak, for your servant is listening. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's just worship him for just a moment. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Okay, this may not feel like it's a part of what we just said, but this is, uh, we're being led by the Spirit. As I was thanking the Lord, I had an image that came before me, and I saw the, I saw the continent of Australia, and of course, many of you know it's on fire. And I saw us doing what I'm about to lead us to do, and I just feel like the Lord wants us to do this. I think he's probably leading lots of others to do it, but I feel like we're supposed to do it. So can we be led to do this? Yes. All right, I want you to join hands real quick. We're going to speak to the fires and tell them to stop in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, Lord. We glorify and bless your name. Father, at the leading of the Spirit, we, we enter into agreement. Your word says that when we are in agreement together, that whatever we ask in your name, the Father will do it. So, Father, we agree in the name of Jesus concerning this. And we speak to the fires that are burning in Australia. And we command them in Jesus' name. Stop. Stop in the name of Jesus. Say this with me. Stop in the name of Jesus. And those who set fires, let them be arrested. In the name of Jesus. And Father, let the church arise in Australia and bring relief and blessing and comfort. Bring consolidation and solidarity among your people. And Lord, where there has been ashes, let there be a fresh wind of the Spirit and fresh rain. Let the rain fall, and as the rain falls, let the Spirit of God breathe across that nation. And Lord, bring a harvest, bring a purity to your church and a harvest to that nation. In the name of Jesus. Say this, in the name of Jesus, we speak blessing and restoration over the commonwealth of Australia in Jesus' name. Now lift your hands and give God praise for that right now.
Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's just begin to just continue to thank him. We believe it's done. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We love you so much, Lord. You're so good. Father, we, as, we, as we close this service, we do so, Lord, with thought and meditation upon your love and your grace and mercy. Let us run to you. Not just turn to you, but run to you, Lord. And we thank you that you love us enough to call us to yourself. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. I just want to say, if you're here today and you'd like to turn to the Lord, maybe you've been living far from God. Or maybe you've never given your life fully to the Lord, to God and to Jesus. Listen, Jesus loves you. He died for you. He's your Savior. He wants you to receive him. But you have to, you have to receive Jesus. And in a moment, we're going to dismiss, but we have a prayer team that's going to be here at the altar. And if you need prayer for anything, you want to just unburden, you want to, you want to have someone stand and pray with you to be restored, come forward and let us pray for you. You want to give your life to the Lord or know what that means. Come to this altar and we will minister to you. You just don't feel like you're supposed to leave yet. You feel like you're supposed to pray a little longer. Just come and seek the Lord because the Lord is calling you to himself. Hallelujah. Jesus name. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be so gracious and favorable to you. May he lift up his face upon you and give you peace. And may something wonderful and awesome and great happen in your life this week as you seek to serve him in Jesus name.